everybody, my name is Isaac Montoya and I am the Director of Marketing with Upsite Technologies. Um, we are excited to, uh, to, be, to be presenting to you today and thank you all for joining us. Um, I'll be joined here shortly by Tim Wilson, President of PTI, uh, Lars Strong, Senior Engineer and Company Science Officer with Upsite, and Travis Talcott, uh, Technology Specialist with Upsite. Um, we are very grateful that PTI Solutions invited us along to uh, present the EchoSense to, to all of you. So hopefully um, you can you know, learn quite a bit about this solution and uh, please feel free to ask any questions along the way. Um, everybody will be muted on the call just to eliminate any background noises, um, but if you do have any questions, um, that we encourage you to ask, please uh, do so via the Q&A module at the bottom of your screen and maybe at the top, um, but either way it will be in the Zoom dashboard. Um, so please go ahead and ask your questions, like I said, throughout the duration of the presentation and, uh, and we will get to those at the, towards the end uh, in the Q&A portion. Um, if you have any technical difficulties as far as audio or video or anything like that, feel free to shoot me a message through the chat module, and uh, and I will see what I can do to get that uh, to get that all situated for you and get that fixed. So before I pass it off to to Tim, um, I just want to quickly go over a little bit about what Lars and Tim are going to be talking about today. So. We're going to open up and talk about the four R's of airflow management, which is a, an approach to airflow management that we at Upsite kind of coined quite a few years ago, um, and I think it really brings EchoSense into the big picture. Um, so then we'll, we'll segue into that to talk about who EchoSense is, what they are. We'll show a short video uh, to explain all the, some of the features that come along with that. Um, we'll reference this video throughout the duration of the presentation through the key attributes, the optimization um, approach, and then talk a little bit about the market position where EchoSense currently lives. Um, we'll then go into the architecture and connectivity and capabilities, um, and then finally go into a software demonstration. Um, and lastly, after that, we will then go into the Q&A portion of the, uh, of the presentation. Um, so, like I said, we encourage you to ask questions along the way. Um, we look forward, we, you know, we really appreciate the engagement, um, so we are looking forward to any, any questions that you have. So, without further ado, I'm going to kick this off to Tim uh, to get us started. Tim, go ahead. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We're really excited about our partnership with Upside and EchoSense. We really believe that this is the next evolution and next stage in uh, software, and it actually takes us to a much higher level of uh, software and management uh, for uh, everybody uh, who, uh, who does today use it and to everybody who will use it. Uh, taking control of your cooling and your power with the EchoSense uh, intelligence, uh, I believe, is the next step. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to turn it over to uh, Lar, and uh, he's going to tell you a lot more. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. Yeah, and, and I also want to appreciate everyone for joining us. I appreciate you spending your time with us, and uh, we'll do our best to share some valuable information with you and look forward to the discussion afterwards. So we'll start by taking a look at our four R's of airflow management. And they involve the three R's of improving airflow management. And the fourth R is the room level, making adjustments to optimize. This is a concept, as Isaac said, that we developed to help data center managers uh, focus their efforts on the various aspects of airflow management and to provide a reminder that it's necessary to include controls adjustments to realize savings and to realize that uh, recovered stranded capacity. And we're very excited about having EchoSense now in our product offering because it gives data center managers a full uh, suite of solutions, both simple uh, blanking panels to containment and now to monitoring and software that really engages and provides education and visualization into 
the aspects of running a data center that have been previously invisible. And uh, it's, it's the difference that makes the difference is what I'm hearing from customers. So um, I hope to uh, share that with you today. So let's take a look at the three main aspects of the solution. It's a unique combination of monitoring, managing, and maximizing. There are solutions out there that do pieces of those, but none put it together in the way that EchoSense has. It starts with the critical things, and the critical things are the hardware component, the sensors and the various components of hardware that bring that information out to the cloud and to the EchoSoft uh, software immersive solution. This, thirdly, this has been developed by some very intelligent people with a lot of experience that have written in machine learning and, and artificial intelligence algorithms into the software to enable some extraordinary visuals and recommendations on maximizing. That's one of the unique aspects of EchoSense is this recommendations for maximizing. And of course, there's numerous reasons why someone would be interested in a solution such as this. Um, implementing monitoring and, and managing solutions as well as the maximizing the optimization piece obviously reduces thermal risk, um, increases the uh, efficiency of the site, which reduces the energy cost from uh, re improving the PUE, and recovers stranded capacity, increases the cooling capacity available in the room. So to give you a short overview of this, I'd like to play a video for you that is just under two minutes, and it gives a real comprehensive sense of um, the, the whole picture. And that's one thing I'd like to do is, is show the, the whole picture for you so we can start from that frame and then we'll get into more and more of the details. Data centers are the heart of the internet. And with an explosive demand in digital services, the need to keep your DC cool under pressure is only going to increase. At EchoSense, our purpose is to continuously monitor, manage, and maximize your data center performance. Our results speak for themselves. By removing 100% of your thermal risk, we can help you release additional capacity from your existing infrastructure at the same time as reducing your data center energy usage. In fact, our customers have reduced their cooling costs by an average of 24%, and we are proud to say that we are currently saving our customers over $2.5 million per year, and this number is growing rapidly. All of these benefits are powered by EchoSoft Critical, our innovative software and unique low-cost sensor platform that helps your data center team stay ahead of the game with real-time visibility of critical operations across your entire estate. Our software presents each of your DC locations in an easy-to-use 3D environment that monitors compliance and reduces thermal risk. It provides management of your power, space, and cooling capacity and allows for simulation of future IT and cooling loads. This maximizes performance and helps you to make controlled energy savings guided by our innovative cooling advisor capability. All of this at a fraction of the cost of traditional DCIM approaches. EchoSoft Critical gives you everything you need to optimize your data center. EchoSense, your data center monitored, managed, maximized. So that's the, the high level overview and now we'll, we'll get back into um, the presentation and go through some more of the details. So here's a few of the key attributes of the solution. It's an immersive, you create an immersive digital twin of the room 
uh, with what's called a rapid room builder. And that creates these uh, rendered images that are quite realistic of the environment. And we'll show you a number of those benefits as we continue with the presentation. Obviously, real-time thermal conditions are monitored and revealed. Um, cooling analytics, some very powerful cooling analytics uh, through the machine learning. And this provides company-wide uh, access across all of the data centers or all of the, the computer room suites. It is a simple and easy way, uh, solution to deploy, particularly when just focusing on the thermal aspects of the solution. And it provides um, full M&E uh, capacity planning and cooling optimization planning. And again, we'll show you more of those attributes as we continue. So the approach is to gather, visualize, and provide analytics on that data and deliver tangible results. And that's what's really unique about the EchoSense solution. There are, of course, a number of solutions, a number of systems being used already, BMS systems, building automation, uh, building management systems uh, are widely used and necessary for many aspects of the uh, data center operations. And there are also systems that are focused the, on the electromechanical uh, equipment, really provide good analytics on, on that. There's, of course, DCIM that has gone through a roller coaster ride of adoption and, and some criticism, but uh, is obviously a very valuable tool in managing a site. But then there's real-time machine learning and, and artificial intelligence. And this is the spectrum that EchoSense sits in. We have also CFD analysis, computational fluid dynamics modeling. And the beauty of CFD modeling is these very clear images that show what's happening in a computer room. Of course, CFD modeling is, is not a management or a, uh, a monitoring solution. Uh, so it, it has those lacks, but it does have those great visuals that are really helpful. So EchoSense, as I said, is real-time um, monitoring and utilizing that machine learning and that artificial intelligence algorithms provides these CFD-like graphics in a way that make um, managing a site um, much clearer. And as I mentioned before, it's the difference that makes a difference. And what I mean by that is that these graphics make the difference in engaging data center managers in the process. This is a tool that was really designed for those that are responsible for the power and the cooling in the space, both uh, providing the appropriate conditions for customers and managing those resources going forward. So I'd like to talk about the architecture and the connectivity. What are the components of the EchoSense solution? Well, it starts with the monitoring, of course. And the rack-mounted monitors are available in a, with a display and without a display. And then there's also a piece of hardware called an Echo Air, and this is critical in gathering information from what's happening with cooling units. So these, these uh, pieces of hardware gather the information and they transmit it wirelessly to hubs, and they're called Echo Hubs, and, and there's a number of these spread around in the computer room. And then uh, by wire, to, through a PoE switch, to an Echo Link, which is also on site, uh, this echo link gathers all the information and then takes that out uh, in a outbound um, internet connection to the cloud where it is uh, processed and, and that's where the software resides. So this is all that's necessary for the thermal solution of uh, all the features in EchoSense. However, there's a lot of very valuable power monitoring and management tools. And those can be brought into the system through Modbus and SNMP uh, through the customer's network, or can be brought in directly through 485 serial ports into the Echolink 
uh, component uh, staying off of the customer's network. And one of the really beautiful benefits of uh, the PTI partnership is that there is no piece of equipment that uh, PTI will not be able to uh, bring into the system. Old or new, they know how to bring, gather that information from those components and bring it into a system so that uh, that information can be used. So let's look at some of the uh, other key ask attributes of it. Um, there's, an, as I mentioned, an immersive digital twin. This is a rendered uh, room which runs on a gaming engine, and that has a number of advantages. It has high resolution uh, rendering and creates very quick rendering. So you can manipulate these images and uh, walk through the space and, and see that very quickly. The graphics are extraordinarily intuitive and clear, and we'll show you more examples of that as we go through. There are company-wide dashboards and then dashboards that can be drilled down into to see very detailed conditions. Um, this provides real-time information for decision-making. There's alerts and monitoring, of course, that are uh, often built around the ASHRAE guidelines. and. Uh, there is quick and easy deployment. This is something that can be deployed by the end users themselves or that can be done in partnership with the provider. And of course, in the, uh, in the US, this operates on the 923 megahertz band. So looking at the capacity planning, uh, in a few minutes when Travis goes through the software demo, he'll show you some of these functions. Uh, there's 3D cooling and electrical views. Again, these graphics really make a difference in comparison to looking at, say, spreadsheets or these, these standard dashboards uh, that tend to not uh, be as useful uh, because they're not as easy to look at. Making things clear and simple these 3D views really uh, help with the management of the site. There's a uh, simulator for power and cooling capacity that we'll demonstrate for you as well. And some very intuitive and clear reports that are customizable. Now, some more about the maximizing, because that's one of the really unique aspects of this tool. It's not just a monitoring tool, it's also um, a maximizing and optimization tool. And Tim spoke about that as, as something he's very excited about seeing uh, new to the market. And this comes in the form of what's called a cooling advisor. The EchoSense solution does not take control of the infrastructure in the data center like a, a number of other uh, options uh, are out there. The EchoSense solution provides recommendations through the cooling advisor and Travis will demonstrate some of those recommendations and, and how those are followed or not followed. Um, Real-time uh, analytics, uh, there's zone of influence and I'll show you the power of that in just a moment. Uh, there's the ability to identify inefficiencies and recover stranded capacity and some very powerful side-by-side -side comparisons. The annual energy savings has been mentioned a few times and ROIs are quite strong with this solution. Uh, customers are finding that rather than just deploying airflow management improvements and, and thermal monitoring solutions, which typically have uh, an associated cost and very little ROI benefit, the cooling advisor provides a rapid return on investment as well. So here's some images from the software. This is an image looking at the room and the colors, of course, represent the intake temperatures on the cabinets. One of the things I want to mention about this is you'll see that uh, every cabinet in this room has a color which means every cabinet in this room has a sensor. This solution as a, as a comprehensive solution was developed with very low cost, very competitively priced um, temperature sensors 
That's not the point of it. The point of it is to gather that information um, through the granular deployment of sensors so that these powerful analytics can be played out. Um, when you look at this, you can start to do some very sophisticated things. This image shows the trends of the cooling units. So each of these cooling units has a histogram that represents the amount of time over the last 24 hours that this cooling unit has spent at different levels of cooling. And so you can see very quickly by looking at these histograms how, what cooling units are providing the most cooling and which cooling units are running idle. The software utilizes that information uh, to make recommendations. Here's a before and after comparison on the timeline. You see here across the bottom of the screen that the timeline starts from deployment of the solution and uh, runs to the current moment. And any two points in time can be compared either side by side like this or in a split screen view. And one of the things I want to point out that here on the left is the before conditions. And you'll see an area of the room that's quite cold. These cabinets have very low intake temperatures and some warmer intake temperatures and even some quite high intake temperatures over in this corner of the room. Whereas in the after conditions, everything is more green and uh, blue, a little bit of yellow, indicating that intake temperatures are, are up higher and more even closer to that ASHRAE recommended limit of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so much more uh, uh, optimized condition. Another really powerful aspect of the machine learning is the zone of influence. And so you can see in this image that each of the cooling units is colored and the cabinets that that cooling unit feeds have the matching color. So you can see in this row that uh, there are three different cooling units feeding the cabinets in this row. These cabinets are fed by air that comes from this cooling unit. A couple of cabinets here are fed from air from this cooling unit. And this blue cooling unit provides cooling to these last two cabinets in the room. How this is done is that the, the software is constantly monitoring the intake temperatures to the cabinets, as well as the supply temperatures from the cooling units. And as those fluctuate, it, the software is able to match up the zone of influence and identify the plumes of cooling air under the raised floor. This becomes very useful in identifying uh, the capacity availability uh, for deploying high density equipment, as well as solving some recirculation problems uh, when they occur in rooms. This image shows what the cooling advisor looks like. And you see here on the left the rack temperatures and uh, what maximum allowable intake temperature you would like the software to consider. And then a list of optimization tasks. You can see here with these green crossbars that this cooling unit is uh, highlighted and tagged for being placed in standby because the software has identified that the cooling units do not have variable speeds and that this cooling unit is not necessary. It can be turned off and then the fan energy from that cooling unit can be saved. This is one of the uh, views of the power. This 3D image is um, rotatable and, and Travis will demonstrate that later. It's something you can, can look at from different angles. And it is, of course, customized to the unique one-line configuration of every unique site. Another one of the many displays on power, this one showing the different colors on the cabinet indicate which PDUs are feeding uh, those dual-fed cabinets. And now I'd like to uh, turn it over to Travis and uh, let him walk you through some real-time demonstration of what the software looks like. Travis, you might be on mute. 
Yeah, thank you very much, Lars. I'm just pulling up my screen here. Okay. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, I'm Travis Talcott, and I'm just gonna take you through a quick uh, demonstration of the software so you can see the features and attributes that Lars was talking about uh, in real life. So this is the first thing that you'll see when you log into the software. Uh, it's the estate dashboard. So it shows all the different sites and rooms under a company. Um, then what you'll get next is the alerts. So thermal alerts, if something's too hot or too cold. Faults, which are actually configurable by the end user. Uh, so for example, if someone has leak detection equipment that they want to um, port into the software for alerting, uh, that will be up here here. Next is power alerts. So if there's a spike or a drop in power, for example. And then the last two are connectivity. So sensors, if uh, we lose connection to a sensor, or the batteries are low, uh, we'll get an alert here. And then actual connection to the cloud, just so we can make sure everyone's up and running and talking to EchoSoft Critical. Then you'll see the leaderboard. Um, so for example, you'll see uh, temperatures, which are the average inlet temperatures in this room. Uh, then you'll see the range, which is the delta between the highest intake temperature and the lowest intake temperature in the room. Compliance level, which is based off of ASHRAE recommendations. And then finally, you'll see uh, PUE for these rooms. Then you can go ahead and click on one and um, get some general details about this room. So the first thing you'll see is the digital twins, so you can see what the room looks like. Then you'll go to the thermal pane, uh, so you'll see the average temperature of the intakes of all the racks in the room, uh, the max temperature of those intakes, uh, the temperature range, and the compliance once again. So then we can move into the power pane. Uh, you'll see total power, which is site-wide power. Uh, then the next two are specific room level power, so UPS power, um, as well as DC power. Uh, then you can see the cooling power uh, that this room is currently using, as well as the PUE once again. And then finally, the utilization pane, which looks at um, total uh, site-wide as well as uh, room-specific utilization for power, cooling, and also available space. Uh, so the site-wide, we're at 81%, and uh, these are actually color-coded. So they will either, uh, as the percentage increases or decreases, it will change in color. Um, then you'll get the UPS usage for this room, uh, the DC usage for this room, as well as the cooling usage and the space, which is uh, configurable by the end user. And uh, basically what it's doing is you can say, I have some available space for some racks in this room. Um, so you go ahead and program that in the Rapid Room Builder. Then we'll just get a general overview, um, different points of monitoring. The last time the floor plan was updated and then an echo score, uh, which is essentially a credit score for the room. Uh, however, this is not currently available to the public, but it will be very shortly. So then from here, we can actually go into the room and um, really see a lot more of the detail. So as Lars mentioned, this is built on a uh, gaming engine, which makes rendering the graphics um, very quick. Um, and it also allows us to do a bunch of cool things uh, with visualizations and how we can actually um, interact with all the data that we're um, collecting from this room. So if we want to just look at general information about this room, we can go over into the toolbar on the left and click the information icon. So as you can see, uh, we can see just some general information, uh, the room size, so the square footage of the room, how many racks are in this room, vents, which are supply tiles, um, ACU units, as well as PUs. Uh, then we can go and see some uh, environmental information, which is showing a lot of the same information you saw um, on the first screen there, which is so average rack temperature, the max temperature and the min temperatures, uh, the relative humidity, dew point, as well as compliance level. Uh, then we can get some more detailed cooling information. So um, the cooling utilization, so how many kilowatts we're actually using, and then the active uh, utilization percentage. And then we can get some power information. So the site-wide power, uh, the specific UPS and DC power draws right now, uh, the cooling power, and miscellaneous, which is uh, another third party um, aspect of the software. So if you're monitoring other types of power that's not um, uh, just uh, IT equipment or um, AC unit related, that uh, will show up here. Uh, and then we can actually look at PUE for cooling as well as total PUE for this room. 
So then let's go ahead and look into a rack. So all you have to do is click on a rack, um, whichever one you want in this room. And then you can click this target button up here at the top, which zooms right into that rack so you can make sure you're actually looking at what you want to be looking at. Um, and we'll, first that shows up is some general information. So for example, where it is on the floor, uh, the temperature, which is the top inlet temperature, uh, the relative humidity, the delta T of the rack, uh, the dew point, as well as the current power draw. Then we can expand into the reading some more, so load A and B power draws. Um, the temperature, which is the top inlet temperature, uh, the low inlet temperature, the outlet temperature, as well as the relative humidity. Then we can see some capacity information, so allocated power, uh, maximum power uh, that this rack can handle, uh, the reserved power, as well as um, the power sources that uh, this rack is drawing from. And then we can just see um, some general power information. So the power type, so if it's DC, UPS fed, um, we'll see that here. And then the different load A and B powers. So since this is built on a gaming engine, we're able to really see um, a lot the data in a much different way than other solutions uh, provide. Um, so we can go into what we call the filters. Uh, so for example, for the racks, uh, we can visualize the inlet and outlet temperature differences. Um, we can look at the rack air flows to make sure that everything's positioned how it should be. Uh, we can look at the compliance, for example, custom groups. So let's say um, an end user has racks that have different compliance levels. Uh, we can go ahead and specify this here or for co-location facilities, for example, we can go ahead and split those up. Um, then we can look at power supplies. So you saw this graphic in the slides. Um, so we can just see exactly what power sources um, this rack is actually being fed from. And then just like the racks, if we want to take a look at an ACE unit, all we have to do is click on it and we'll go ahead and click the target again. So we make sure we're looking at the correct one. Uh, and then we'll just get some general information up first. Uh, so grid reference, uh, return temperature and supply temperature, uh, the total CFM currently, um, as well as the cooling load. And then we can dive further into the reading. So the return temp, the supply temp, as well as the fan amperage. Other, we can see some more advanced stuff. So the nominal cooling duty, uh, the derated cooling duty and the nominal airflow for this unit. And then we'll look at things that we're actually monitoring for this unit. So the total voltage of the unit, uh, how many fans it has and how many we're monitoring, as well as the phases per fan and the nominal fan power. So exactly like the racks, uh, we have a lot of visualizations that you can go through. So for example, you can just see strictly supplier return air temperatures. Um, you can see what Lars had showed you uh, in the slides as well, which is the cooling trend. Uh, so as you can see in this picture here, it's just a very uh, easy visual representation of what this cooling unit is actually doing over a 24 hour period. Um, so you can see it spends a lot of time in about the 60 to 70 kilowatt range and not a lot of time less than 10 to 20 kilowatts. And what's nice about this is that you can actually compare it to other AC units in the room to make sure that everything's behaving how you think it is. Um, and you can go ahead and spin this around another good aspect of building this on a gaming engine so you can really compare it to all different units that you might need. So now we'll go ahead and talk about the first piece of artificial intelligence and machine learning that Lars had talk about, talked about, uh, which is the cooling zones or the zone of influence. Uh, so we can go ahead and just look at the entire room here. And so you can see, as Lars was explaining, everything is color coded and it's very easy to see which racks are being fed by uh, which AC unit. And we actually use this information for more than just um, the zone of influence. Uh, we use it across the entire software to really give accurate um, predictions and recommendations for uh, what your data center is doing. And that's very useful for the next thing that I'm gonna show you, which is the cooling advisor. So if we're looking at this bottom navigation menu here, all we have to do is click on advisor and we go ahead and click start. The first thing that uh, pops up is just a warning uh, with terms and conditions saying, hey, look, we're about to provide recommendations for how you can cool your data center or make it more efficient. I'll go ahead and accept those. And then you can title um, the optimization, whatever you want, as well as add in notes, and then set different limits for the max and min temperatures for the inlet temperatures. Uh, right now, these are just ASHRAE, uh, based off of ASHRAE, but you can go ahead and set your own here. 
and then just click OK. So what we're doing is we're looking at all the his historical data up to this point, um, comparing it and really um, seeing what you could do or what an end user could do in their room uh, to make it more efficient. So we can see it as finished running. And then um, a list of optimization tasks will appear over on the right. Uh, if you go ahead and click on one, um, you can see it flashing that we can go ahead and zoom in on it by hitting the target button. We can see exactly what it's talking about. So replace this vent uh, with a solid floor tile. Uh, so then what you could do is you could go into the room, uh, actually replace that with a solid floor tile and go ahead and complete it in the software. Um, or you can reject it if you don't uh, think that it merits uh, replacing or for any other reason. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and cancel it. Uh, and then we can see there's some other tasks. So um, optimizing set points, all the set points are good in this room. But then we can go ahead and see we might want to place this AC unit in standby. And just click on it and click the target button so you can see exactly what it's talking about. So as soon as this is done, uh, just go ahead and hit stop. Um, and it will pull up a log that shows you exactly everything that happened during this optimization. Um, and then we can go ahead and hit OK. And so this is fantastic. Um, we've now done an optimization, but EchoSense takes it a step further and actually shows you uh, what the fruits of your labor really were uh, with the compare and contrast view. So we'll just go ahead and go into split screen. Um, and as Lars was saying, uh, the timeline begins whenever uh, all this uh, system was deployed. Uh, so we can go back in time to whenever we want. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and go back to Saturday. And all you have to do is click on a point. Uh, let's say you want to add in, uh, you're doing another project in your data center, you can also make a snapshot with the snapshot tool, uh, just so you can track those points very easily. Um, as, as you can see, the before is on the left and the after is on the right. So you can um, compare and contrast it this way, or you can go into what we call swipe mode, uh, which allows you to really get into detail and see exactly what changed and when um, in this room at these different points in time. All right, so that's going to uh, finish up the thermal side of things. So uh, we're going to go ahead and look at the capacity module now. Uh, so just on the bottom navigation pane here, we can go ahead and click into capacity. And you'll see the visualizations will change um, because we're showing and showing and visualizing different uh, information in here. So uh, let's go ahead and look at a rack real quick. Um, so we can see the legend on the left has also changed. So now we're looking at um, the yellow color is actual measured power from the PVU units in this rack. Uh, then the green color is allocated power. So that's something that the end user sets themselves, um, allocating a certain uh, level of power to this rack. And then uh, we can see the purple in this rack uh, is reserved power. So that's actually um, when you go through and do capacity uh, planning through this uh, system. So you can see there's different um, icons over some of these racks. Uh, those are color coded uh, based off of types of changes for capacity um, as well as uh, timeline. So for example, if we want to add a rack and add some, uh, add a new rack, we can go ahead and look at this one. So we want to add this rack to this room, but we don't necessarily know if we can or should or if we have enough cooling and also power available in this room. Uh, so what you can do is you can go ahead and add it, raise the ticket, and um, allocate some power to it. Uh, so for example, uh, 2.5 kilowatts for this rack. But then what we can do uh, is we can actually drag this rack around to different points in the room to see really where we could place it. So even though there's some open space up here, you can see it's being rejected either because it doesn't have enough cooling capacity or enough power on the side of the room to handle it. And then all you have to do is go ahead and let it go. And we'll go back to the original spot where it was if it can be accepted there. So that's really useful uh, for simulating adding or removing equipment in a room without actually making any changes. So then from here, we can go ahead and look at the site-wide um, power schematic. So as Lars was saying, this is much easier to see uh, than just looking at numbers on a spreadsheet. And because it's a 3D view, we can actually turn it around and we can look at um, specific things. So for example, this bottom row, 
is room level power. So if we want to see where this PDU is drawing from, for example, all we have to do is click on it and it highlights the route that this is taking. Um, and then we can keep moving up the chain uh, from there. And then we can see uh, different information. So for example, total power that this UPS um, unit is supplying, where it's getting its draw from, uh, different things along those lines to really make it uh, very easy to see exactly what's going on on the power side of things. And finally, um, I know right now a lot of people are stuck working from home and uh, might not be able to actually get into the data center. But we actually, with the software, can provide you a virtual walkthrough by using what we call the first person view. So if we just click on this on the top right, the FPV, we can actually click and move around this room as if we were actually in it. So as you can see, you can look at specific cabinets, uh, different features in the room like this AC unit. So we can see the uh, total cooling and the return supply temperatures, for example. And you can just walk around and see this from anywhere in the world. Like, for example, if you're taking a nice vacation on a beach in Mexico somewhere, but you want to check in on your data center, you can go ahead and do that here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys there and pass it on back to Lars. Thank you very much, Travis. Just a second as I share my screen again. So I want to give you a little perspective from end users and share some of uh, the customers that have deployed this so far. So this is a quote from uh, Digital Realty. And I think it's really poignant because they say here, uh, the gentleman goes through and says that improving efficiency by retrofitting in old, older data centers has historically been complex and, and resulted in incremental improvements. But he's noting that with the EchoSense solution, uh, there are significant energy savings for legacy data centers. And th that's the result of the cooling advisor and following those recommendations. And you see that the results in detail here, there was a 20% cooling energy reduction, half a million kilowatt hours were saved. That resulted in energy cost savings of over $53,000 in five months and a full ROI in just five months for that initial uh, spend. And of course, all the other benefits that come with that, the reduced thermal risks, the identification and removal of, of hot and cold spots, early warning, and that ongoing capacity planning ability. So a substantial savings that of course are going to vary by customer, uh, historically now through the customers that have deployed this, the deployed the EchoSense solution and have also opted for the on-site advice of full cooling optimization, the savings average 24% cooling energy savings. And obviously that is very significant because for a data center of a PUE of two, just to keep the math simple, um, half the power is going to the IT equipment and half the power is going to the infrastructure. And the cooling typically represents about 35% of the non-IT load. Uh, over 70%, um, sorry, 30, cooling represents 35% of the total load and over 70% of the non-IT load. So by reducing the cooling energy savings, you can have a dramatic effect on the PUE, and it's the, it's the most uh, leverage you can get for improving the overall uh, site savings. For customers that have deployed the software and simply followed the recommendations of the advisor on their own, those savings have been between 10 to 15% of the cooling energy. And that also is quite substantial. Here's a, a wide list. You can see a wide range of customers here from a number of different verticals that have obviously done a detailed evaluation of uh, the solution and decided to put it at their facilities. 
many across their portfolio of suites, not just at one suite. So with that, I'd like to uh, leave us with the rest of our time to address any questions that you have. Awesome, thanks Lars, and uh, thank you Travis. That was a, a great presentation. Um, so it looks like we've got some, uh, some, some questions flowing through, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start asking them. The first one is, do you need more than one echo link per room? Uh, that's a good question. So the echo links are capable of receiving information from quite a large number of echo hubs and monitors. It really becomes a geographic thing. If there are a couple of rooms close together, then one echo link can support multiple rooms. But if there uh, are buildings on, say, a campus that are separated, uh, then there's probably going to be a need for one echo link per uh, building. Got it, okay. Next one, what is the battery life of the Echo Sense sensors? Uh, the sensors are put at a two minute polling, which is fairly frequently. Uh, we guarantee three years and typically get uh, as much as five years uh, battery life out of them. They do have indicators uh, to uh, note when their batteries are getting low, and they can easily be field replaceable by the end user. All right, thank you. Uh, next one, it seems like power monitoring is more complex. Can you lead with thermal and add power monitoring later? Yeah, that's a good question. It, it, it is more complex. It's more, in, it's more involved, let's say, and, and does require uh, more participation with the site and connection to other devices, of course. Again, with PTI support, that is a, they, they can make that uh, as, as painless as possible with their expertise there. It is absolutely possible to begin with just the thermal and get all the benefits of the thermal monitoring and the cooling advisor and then add incrementally, it also doesn't have to be done all at once, add incrementally all of the other uh, power capabilities. All right, thanks. The next one, does the software send alerts? Uh, yeah, so I'm assuming the question is related to um, alerts uh, by text or email. And currently, the software provides alerts by email, and the uh, capability of adding text is on the drawing board, but not yet uh, part of the uh, alert system. All right, thanks. Uh, next one, who does the room building? Uh, so the room building is designed to be simple enough for the end user to do, but it is also a service that we are happy to provide. Um, we can build those rooms, create those rooms, and then they exist in the in the system for the user um, uh, from then on. Yeah. So either or. Okay, we've got another one here. Uh, do you have any DOD or other government deployments that are allowing remote access? What about the wireless sensors? Our site has a policy that prohibits wireless, but if there is precedent, maybe there could be, maybe they could be more accommodating. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So that has become uh, an issue. It, it's something that a number of people have brought up as a resistance to this solution. However, Upon detailed review, uh, they have adopted them. As I you know, shared before, uh, a wide range of customers, um, I'm sharing that slide again, a, a wide range of verticals uh, have opted, gone through this vetting process and uh, found that the uniqueness and considerations of the security are acceptable and there are some sites that we can provide for precedence if uh, you want to uh, have that conversation afterwards. 
All right. We got one more here, it looks like. Um, I'm not sure if we have an answer to this one, but Travis, I think this one is going to be for you. Did you say EchoSense was built on a video game engine? Out of curiosity, what engine What engine was it built on? Uh, yes, it was built off a, game, a video game engine. However, um, I at this time do not know specifically which one. Uh, however, I will get back to you with an answer for that. Got it. Okay, we will definitely follow up with that, uh, with that question. Thanks, Travis. Um, if there are not any other questions, um, you know, I guess we'll keep maybe stay on line for, for another minute or so to see if there are um, if any other flow through. Um, Lars and Travis, great job. Tim, um, wanted to, you know, bring you back into this. Did you want to have any closing uh, remarks or, um, or would you like to add anything to the presentation? Yeah, that was uh, that was fantastic. Um, thanks everybody for uh, you know doing such a good job with the presentation. Um, and you know, if there's anybody out there that has any additional questions uh, after the fact, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, get back to you with any uh, any questions you have. You can send uh, me an email at twilson at pdisolutions.com, and also. Um, we will have a, I believe this was uh, recorded, so therefore we will have a, uh, uh, a recorded uh, version available at some point and soon, and then uh, you can actually, if you want to run through it again, uh, you can run through it again. Um, so, and I believe we have another question, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it back over to you. Looks like we do, yeah, and, and, to, and to answer your question real quickly, yes, we did record this, so we'll be uh, sending out the recording and the, uh, the slides, um, you know, within the next day or two. Um, all right, so let's get to this next question. How does the system deal with downtime in regards to data compilation? It's been my experience that data can be missing in regards to history. Travis, is that one you can address? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, so the echo link, since everything goes to the cloud, um, all the data is stored in the cloud. And if the echo link does go down, um, it actually stores that data. Uh, we can, you can customize the period uh, for that uh, out of the box. It stores everything for 24 hours. Um, so, but you can customize that, uh, for example, up to a week. And, and one related point to that is that the uh, Echolink is gathering information from sensors at a two minute polling interval and, and filtering out duplicate information. So as individual components may have difficulty, uh, there's often duplication of that. And so very little data is lost in, in uh, small component outages. Great, thank you, Travis. Thank you, Lars. Um, okay, doesn't look like we have any other questions, um, but I uh, just wanted to say, Tim, thank you for inviting us to pre to present. Um, we really appreciate the opportunity. We hope that um, your audience got everything they're looking for. And uh, as 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 you mentioned, Tim, you know, if there's any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to to Tim or Lars, and we'll be uh, we'll be happy to answer those for you. Um, and I think without uh, without further ado, I think we're we'll we'll be all set here. So Tim, thanks again. Lars, Travis, thank you uh, both. Um, you know, feel free to uh, add any closing remarks of your own if you like. Uh, goodbye, everyone. Thank you for your time. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>